We're telling your followers that you've started a live video. So I'm just giving a couple, like maybe two minutes to start, and then I'm going to be showing how I take painted roving and all of these beautiful extras and turn them into fiber bats on my carter. And I'm going to have, hey there, I'm gonna have the um, camera facing the carter drum so you can see. I won't necessarily be able to answer questions because I'm gonna be carding, but I will show you, oh my God, it's so hot. Like I am so sweaty, it's ridiculous. So I am going to set this up right now. Let's see here. Let's see here. Can we see the whole drum this way? Yes, there we go. And then when I'm doing this, perfect. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take my roving and split it into three. I like to do three to four layers on my drum so that I get the maximum amount of color payoff and tweediness, and I like my bats to be really complicated and have a lot of elements to them. So that's one. Um, the reason I pre-paint my roving is because I get a smoother color gradation than if it was um, individually colored and then painted onto the drum. I just find I have to do less work this way. Now my extras, I have some Silk Noil, some Firestar, some Copper and Green Angelina, Wool Nips, Silk, and nylon. So I'm gonna be yelling as, as much as I can over the sound of the drum carter, but basically I'm gonna be painting the layer on, then I'm gonna go back and individually paint in each fiber onto the back of the drum. I always start with my lighter color to my darker color. Which in this case, is the green And you can start to see the colors shifting as I move across. And it's going into these like grasshoppery greens from a spruce color. And I used Pro Chem and Dye's Grasshopper, um, Jacquard's Spruce, Toffee and uh, Reddish Brown from Pro Chem to get these colors. And I dyed it in the braid so that I would get multiple tones per six inches of fiber. Now we're going into the coppery color and it's going to end on a really pretty like reddish plummy brown color, which is just lovely. It's a great complement to the green to have a purple based red against the spruce. Okay, now I can sit. It's 
it's almost like a fall toned rainbow. It's only missing the blue. And uh, it would be a perfect rainbow if it had that. So now we've got that on the drum. Now I'm gonna pick up and paint the layers on individually. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this really pretty red plum based silk and I'm gonna lay it right over this toffee color and then I'm gonna work it towards the red purple. A Little bit into the green, not too much. Now I'm gonna take this really deep green and I'm going to work that on the edges of this really pretty grasshoppery color and into the orange, not too much into the orange because we don't want it to look faded. Now I'm gonna take my bright avocado color and again, just a little bit on the copper and then over this green right here, I'm gonna fit, fuzz it out. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of the green and the copper Angelina, just a little. You only need 2% in a bat. Now I have this deep emerald green and that's gonna go right over here. I don't wanna go into the copper with this. I just want this on the green section and maybe like a hint over here. There we go. Now I'm gonna take our green noil over the copper and the plum. And I'm gonna take this wool, these wool neps and I'm gonna put them over the green section. This is feeling very Christmassy all of a sudden. Okay. And I'm gonna take my orangey ones and put them on the purple side and on there. Now I'm gonna take this copper color, which is actually fluorescent orange toned with fawn. And I'm gonna put it right here. Now I've got a, a moss and a chocolate. A little green here, a little green here, a little bit of moss over here, or um, Cabernet over here. I'm gonna take some of these green nips. And I have a super vivid dark midnight blue that I'm gonna put some over the green and some over this purple to give it a little bit of an undercover rainbow vibe for the people that don't love color but get bored with their neutrals. And then I've got a little bit of copper uh, silk noil. And what I like to do is take the silk noil and introduce, so this is my copper section, this is my green section, so I introduce the copper here. So when you're knitting it, you'll have little copper flecks in the green section that works slowly into the orange section, the coppery section, etc. All right, now we put on our next layer. Fuzz out the tip, like so. And my God, I have sweat all over my face. I'm so glad you guys can't see it. All of your fiber from me comes with the DNA of my sweat. When they talk about blood, sweat, and tears, like I've cut myself on this drum carter and sweat into bats. I haven't cried. That's one thing I haven't done. And then we just layer this on. Let's see, I can't see if anyone's asked any questions. Do you guys have any questions while I'm sitting down doing the boring part? I literally just had to wipe up sweat from here because when I was standing over it, I sweat on it. It's like 90 something degrees today.
back to the painting part. Ugh. So typically what I'll do is first I'll add in my nylon. This is the order I like to put the colors in. Then I'll put in my silk. Then I put on my short staple fibers, which in this case is my silk noil. And see how there it's heavier here and it gets lighter and lighter as it goes out. So we get nice fades like Noro yarn. I'm gonna take some bright green and pop it in over the top of this. I'm gonna take some of these neps. I'm gonna put them on the other side and because now the middle layer is starting to fill up the drum and I want these to be embedded in the fiber. There we go. I'm gonna take some of this nice mossy color over here and over here. Okay, I'm gonna put some more neps in on this side. Now I'm going to lock in my Angelina. With my um, Firestar because a lot of these short staple fibers, if you take the bat off the drum, will come off on their pants while they're spinning. So there's my blue. And my copper. I'm gonna put this one underneath the drum for an even more diffused effect. You're gonna start to see that roll on right now. Now we're going to do our last layer. So, this. Here we go. And as soon as I pull this off the drum, I'm going to take questions. So we're like maybe five minutes out from the question and answer phase. So if you have something you want me to demonstrate or answer, go ahead and pop that in the comments and then I will uh, do the little question and answer shortly. Oops. This bat will probably end up weighing about four and a half ounces. I can get nine ounces on the carter. Less if it's, um, if it's, uh, I can get top nine ounces, locks four, four and a half ounces.
to the end here. Now we're going to go back with our nylon. this silk some more nylon now I'm going to take my silk noil Love this copper color. I'm gonna bring that all the way out over here this time. This green, green. Now I'm gonna take my nips. Wait, let's pop a little emerald on over here, 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 and here. Now I'm gonna add. my Angelina fiber. I'm going to take this and add it under the drum for a diffused effect. So green, the copper, and the deep blue. And this is going to trap all those short staple fibers in to the bat when we pull it off the drum and add a really nice glaze over it. There we go. One pass like that. Now the fun part of taking it off. I am literally sweating over this. Oh my gosh. Ugh. There we go. And as you can see, that is quite a pretty fade on the back side. I'm gonna pull it off for you guys right now and show you the front side and then I'll take some questions, if there are any. So here is the back side in sunlight. And the front side, Let's see if we can go closer. And all that layering and dimension and color really shows in the finished yarn. So, let's set this up. Let's go up and see if I missed any questions here. Da, 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 da. Wobbling. Oh, that's not a name. Join, join, join. Did I smash my thumb? No, that's uh, dye. Got into the um, dye. Got into my glove. Am I splitting them long ways? Yes. Uh, Angelina is like chips. You can never have enough. I agree. But sometimes it can create um, kind of a crispy, crinkly yarn, depending on the kind of Angelina you have. Thank you. So much the next layer is the same as the base layer depending on this bat yes but when i do certain types of nebula bats or rainbow bats i will shift the way the layers are so that there's a rainbow in every stripe sequence and in rainbow ombre in this case i just layered them identically okay how do i feel feeding my silk nylon folded in different compared to painting it on from the end 
if I put it underneath the drum, I get a more diffused effect. If I put it in over the top, I get like um, paint stroke like pieces that when you go back to spin, it looks great in an art yarn. I think it looks great in a two ply spun yarn, but you get brighter pops in the finished knit when you put it over the drum, as opposed to a more diffused marled effect when you put it underneath the liquor in. Okay, let's see here. Can you feel it if you put too much on or not enough? Yeah, um, I think just because I've been making bats for like 11 years that there's a feel to when you're overloading a certain section of the drum and not the other sections of the drum. So your bat will come out thick, thin, thick, thin. I sell my bats so people don't like to spin that. Can I get the same effect on a hand crank drum carter? Sure. You just have to crank with one hand and paint with the other. And let's see. What percentage of special add-ins versus wool do you feel is appropriate for most bats? 25% extras, 75% wool. More than that, and it starts to, um, like if it's too much bamboo or too much silk, you get uh, ropier, heavier, more dense yarn. Let's see. Is the nylon fire star? Uh, there's multiple luminosities of Firestar nylon. One of them, the trilobal nylon, is the sparkliest. Then there's Snow Mountain, which is the mid mid least sparkly. And there's another one. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's, these are just trade names, by the way. But they're, um, they are, what is it, Snow Mountain? Ugh. Anyway, you can get them from Ashland Bay. Thank you. Uh, how do you keep yourself from not wanting to spin it immediately? Because it's so hot here and I just, I, I can't, I can't spin right now. I got two kids underfoot and I got, you know, that's over a hundred pounds of fiber back there <laughs> that I have to work my way through. Okay, cool. So is there any other, anything else before I sign off? Um, in case you just joined, I'm going to show you the bat that we made again. Hey there. All right. Well, thank you for uh, hanging out with me and I will see you guys later. I'll put this up for those of you that missed it.